much for that. I know on behalf of Agenda Agenda we'd like to thank you not only for coming along tonight and singing so beautifully, but for showing such a, a genuine excitement to work with Agenda Agenda and the Canberra Sex and Gender Diverse community on all kinds of events and we very much look forward to working with you in the future. Now, choir will be back at the end of the evening with a few more brilliant numbers and probably make me regret not wearing waterproof mascara. <laughs> Thank you again, and we'll hear from you really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to the Trans Day Remembrance for 2011. My name is Gab, and I consider myself somewhat of a trans community devotee, for lack of a better word. Um, I've been working with Agenda Agenda for a very long time now and certainly love it more and more with every passing day, so that's me. Before we get started, I'd just like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal people as the traditional owners of the land upon which we are currently standing. Okay, thank you all so much for coming along tonight and engaging with this critically important event for our community. <laughs> um, let's talk about what this day can mean. Every year, our international list of the dead is updated. And every year, we do the best that we can through our pain, through erasures within the media, through the structures that work to break down our communication and to keep our community members distant from us. We do our best to memorialise and to pay tribute to the individuals who have had their lives brutally stolen by transphobic violence and discrimination in the previous year. Each year, we are overwhelmed by the number of victims and can feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of the attack on our community because of the way that we experience our gender, but more importantly, because of a mainstream refusal to accept that. So, every year we gather in towns and cities around the world to stand together as a physical human presence, to stand within our valid and important bodies and within our valid and important community to say to these people who have lost their lives, we will not forget you. We will not let the horror and the injustice that you suffered go. We will value you and memorialise you because you are us and we are all human beings. We can look to one another and see not only the threat and the vulnerability, but also the strength that has bound us to persevere and the strength that allows us to remember our dead and to carry our wounded and to hold our loved ones close and to never stop marching forward hand in hand towards the acceptance, the understanding and the celebration that we deserve. Now when I started sort of making notes for today, I realised that I kept sort of inferring to the you know, with hands holding and marching together and carrying one another and all of these references are bound in concepts of corporeality, of a fleshy living bodyhood. Because I, I guess at the end of the day, that's sort of the crux of all of it, isn't it? That earth-given right to own ourselves and to share our warmth and sense our heartbeat and reach out and touch the people that we love. That right to feed and nourish ourselves and to use our bodies in ways that feel right to us and feel good to us. And that is exactly what transphobes in all capacities, from weak leaders and fearful community sectors and cowardly politicians and bigots and criminals are trying to steal from us when they pass and sustain legislation that separates us from autonomy over our bodies, when they force us to go unwillingly under the knife in some cases to, to ensure our right to safe identification, when they comment on gender diverse people like we are less than human, or when they attack and murder, bully, exclude, and torment us. The statement that they are making to us rings loud and clear. We own your bodies and we're going to pull them into line. But does that mean that they succeed in defeating these fantastic and stigmatised bodies? Do they succeed in owning us or pulling us into mind? No. Because no matter what else happens throughout a year, there is at least one day where we gather when a room fills with the shared warmth of people who feel sameness in their difference and beauty. And when these valid bodies say, we are perfect in and of ourselves, and you will never change us. We work through our homage to the victims of hate and fear to remember that the bodies of these victims are not claimed by the perpetrators. That when these people are laid to rest, they are remembered by us as people who are living in their valid bodies and living their valid lives. And every smile and every frown and every laugh, tear or word spoken by these people 
during their lives contributed to the fabric of exquisite difference that can never be taken away. It can never be unthreaded or torn, and it gives us all a blanket of comfort to draw across our shoulders when the world feels too cold to walk through. But do you know what else we can turn to for comfort? We can turn to each other. And Trans Day of Remembrance can be a reminder to celebrate our living sex and gender diverse family. Our smiles, our frowns, our laughter and our tears are all worthy of celebration and validation throughout our lives and not only in the event of a tragedy. You are all worth celebration just for being exactly who you are and for being brave enough to exist in the way that you want to. Trans Day of Remembrance does pay homage to our dead. But a key aspect of memorialisation has always been wrapped in a faith in regeneration, a passionate defence and celebration of the living and the future living and the future living after that. And we must celebrate our community members through their lives and not only in times of passing. Each year that I attend TDOR, and it's been a lot, I see people that I have never seen before. And to me, that means something fairly significant. It means that these structures that are in place to keep us apart can only do so much. Little by little, we're crawling around them or climbing over them, we're burrowing under them, or in fits of stunning anger or joyful exuberance, we're smashing straight through them and we're going towards one another. And we should not forget the vibrancy in that and the vitality that exists in this pulsing and present community. Today is not only about who we have lost, it's about who we still have around us, perhaps newly so, and appreciating the love that we share. And we should also reflect on the astonishing and incredible gains that our community has made this year. The new passport legislation has unshackled so many of us and given new opportunities for identification and for safety and for ease and work and play and travel and experience. And it's just a breathtaking success. The Law Reform and Advisory Council referrals also hold great promise for the Canberra Sex and Gender Diverse community. And we are hoping and assuming that the ACT government will be showing the same dedication to the principles of human rights that they have shown in other areas, and you all know what I'm talking about. That's an optimistically loaded statement, and it's been fun. We've had some significant and life-changing wins in the courts, um, and within our own Canberra Sex and Gender Diverse community, we've had a funded year of community events of social outreach, of health promotion and fun, and many of these have been housed in our very own community space. Which, um, <laughs> you're all correct in clapping. It's, it's huge and it's beyond, I think, what anyone could have thought was possible a mere couple of years ago, and we're just taking these juggernaut steps. So who owns these successes then? Because these were no gifts from the government, no, and they were no little treats from otherwise exclusionist institutions. These wins are territories that were captured by all of us in battles that have been both bloodied and long and are marked by our scars but are just importantly celebrated by our glee and by the rightness of our pursuits and by the happy and real understanding that every border we push back in these battles means a more open, a more understanding, a more free world for every single person on it. So I very much look forward to sharing that world with all of you and with every other person who considers themselves a part of this community that I love so very much. <laughs>